It's Handy Mandy again, and I'm going to be showing you all the books and stuff that I have as resources. And of course, we're in my room right now. So, uh, this is going to be in two parts because I have a lot to tell you. And I'm hoping to do a third part on fashion magazines and my personal opinion what I shop for. And we're going to start off with movies. Alright, so this is just the Star Wars collection. And I also have DVD series. I have movies up here. You can't see them. But, um, you don't have to go out and buy this, but a lot of the movies you already have have featurettes on the, like, in the discs, and they are super awesome for behind-the-scenes information. If you are looking to look into careers in film, um, this is the best way to do it, because this is going to give you an awesome view of what it is to look like and all the steps, and I highly recommend the, the uh, Star Wars movies, because... George Lucas, the creator, has gone through great lengths to document every single step of creating his series. So, as you can see here, here's the Star Wars set. And there are four discs right here. That's because one of them right here, boop, right here, is just all bonus features. Like, seriously, he has a separate disc because there's so much he's got to tell you guys. And if you want to see what I mean, see, these are the prequel cool ones, as you can see. And if you look on the back, only part of them are actually movie, and the rest are all just hours and hours and hours of featurettes. So, look at all that. All that stuff. So, I love looking at featurettes. Um, Trisha Bigger, who is the costume designer for the prequel series, she's created an amazing book that I'm going to show you later. And um, concept art... It, like, I, lo I love looking at concept art all through high school. I just kept printing off all this concept art as the movies were coming out, and I found it very inspirational. So, Star Wars is one that I love looking at the featurettes for, and uh, TV series have a lot of featurettes as well. And all most movies have commentaries with the writers, with the directors, even sometimes the actors themselves, so you get to know what it's like working with any of those people. And, uh... Let's see, next up we have so my books, and uh, I'm very fortunate enough to have very considerate brothers. My youngest brother picked up these. These are the Singer books. Pull this bad boy out. Singer. Um, they are a company that produces, um, their major product is sewing machines, Singer sewing machines, and they have this book series. Um, I have 15 books. I don't know if they're more or any more, but... Um, this is just one of them. Um, rule of thumb when you're looking for uh, sewing books, make sure that there's a whole bunch of pictures just documenting everything and every single step. And um, if you know about enough about sewing machines and all the different steps and you don't have to like look in a glossary or anything like that to remember what it is, um, just run through one little thing and see if it, you can understand it well enough. Because the last thing you want to do is buy a sewing machine or a sewing book that you don't understand. So, rule of thumb when you're looking for books on sewing. And I would highly suggest getting something that's um, relatively new. Not, like, you can go to used bookstores and get a whole bunch of sewing machine, or sewing books. I keep saying that. Sewing books um, for dirt cheap, like 25 cents. I've gotten a couple myself, but um, I found that they're very arts and crafty, they haven't gotten up to speed with different methods of sewing and different techniques, so um, you don't have to buy them brand spanking new, even though Amazon.ca or .com, they all offer you used books for a cheaper price. Um, if you're going bargain hunting, just keep in mind the date and make sure that it seems more up to date. Like, you may not know right away, but I mean... Um, if you look at a book from the 1950s, it's going to be considerably different than one that's been produced in the last 10 or 15 years. So, um, This is another book that I have. It's The Sewing Secrets from the Fashion Industry. So a lot of this stuff, I've had the fortunate occasion to learn while I was in college because a lot of my professors have actually been in the industry. So um, these are proven methods by the pros. Uh, as you can see on the back, it's about 30 bucks, but of course I actually got it on sale. Again, it has lots and lots of images all by the, these uh, 
all the different steps. And it just has getting started, all the stuff you're going to need, how to use it, um, types of techniques, and putting it all together. So if you ever put a shirt or a blouse or a pant or a skirt or whatever together, then it goes through the whole step of the standard skirt, just plain. So if you're designing yourself, it's not going to cover all the steps because, you know, maybe it's draped or something, but um, it'll give you the rough idea. Okay, I love this book. This is the one book that um, I decided that I could not leave college without getting, so I ended up buying it for myself as a Christmas present. And it's $30 US and about 34 Canadian, so you can see up close. Look at this. Look at all that. That's by machine and by hand. This is all fabric manipulation. So they teach a lot of stuff and I'm hoping to get a chance to experiment and do some of these. I have had been able to I have been able to do some of these at school. Um, but there are a lot of them that they don't cover. They just cover like a couple basic ones. So again, there are pictures that show all the different steps, the different kinds. She's done like every single permutation possible. So it gives you a lot to work with with imagination. And personally I think these would be really good for quilters because it's a dying art and what's really on trend right now is to want to go up and just touch the fabric because it looks so textural, it looks so 3D. You want to be like, oh how's that made, how's that feel, and the fabric and all that stuff. So I mean this would be really good for a quilting project. So um, there's some recommended reading at the front and then um, it covers fullness, uh, systematic folding, so pleating, smocking, tucking, cording, quilting, stuffing, using darts, mixed manipulations. It has a whole appendix on hand stitches and just everything. So um, Colette Wolf is the author and um, from what I understand from one of my professors, she's really, really good. So if you get a book by her, you are in luck. Next up is this bad boy. This is my sewing 911 emergencies. If I make a boo boo on my fabric, um, I'm gonna need some kind of way to fix it. Hopefully, without having to completely restart. So, if I burned it or I got interfacing on it or, I, or ripped it or anything like that, um, the only thing is um, one of them in here. It suggested that when you rip your fabric. You want to go ahead and sew it up, but then cover it in a line of beads. I'm going to show you this. This is ridiculous. Use your common sense. Some of these are obviously just really cheap ways to fix it, but if it's something like this, please, for all that sicker and holy, use your common sense. There are, there are a lot of good ones in here, but there are some that are just like, no. Uh, this one, I found this for about 20 some bucks at the AGO. Now, it's not a book or anything, but it's actually um, based on the Dewey Sadka. He's the one who created the Dewey Decimal System. That's how you organize all your library books. This is actually his Dewey Color System. So, um, this is actually um, a personality test based on colors that you choose on impulse. Um, but what I found was really good is in high school my sewing teacher had all these awesome color cards and they were to help you figure out what colors are best to look on you and I'm going to use this for reference because it has pretty much all the colors that you're going to need. So what you do is you get together with a couple friends, um, you can do the personality test and then take a break, have some snacks, play a couple card games, come back and what you want to do is you want to hold up these cards individually and see if they look good on you because a lot of people go out shopping and they have no idea what to shop for. I'm not saying everybody, I'm just saying like um, if you haven't had a lot of practice and you're not like a fashionista per se, um, always know what colors look good on you. So there's colors that really look good on you and there's ones that you kind of pull off. Like me, I have pastels, or not pastel, but like super pale skin so I can't really pull off super light white like my white uniform shirt, it's for work, it's, it just fades me out. It makes me look like a ghost. 
if you look at the red carpet Oscars, you wouldn't believe how many women. There were like 28 celebrity females that decided to wear white, off-white, cream, super light colors, and only six of them could pull it off. So, I mean, you're not the only one. So, if you can, get this one or get some other color card.